In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a blog just like this one in around 15 minutes. And we'll go from like complete scratch, from having absolutely nothing to a fully developed professional looking product in just one video. So without any further talking, let's just start. First, we'll need a place to store all of our files and a website name. For this tutorial, I'll go with a cheap and easy to use solution called Hosting Europe, but you can use whatever you like. If you already have web hosting and a domain name, you can skip to this part in the video and just jump straight into the tutorial. But if you don't have hosting, let me show you how to get a plan with a significant discount. Click the link in the description, this will take you to the Hostinger's website. Scroll down to the bottom and choose the cheapest plan, it's going to be enough for the blog you'll be making. Now select the 4 year period as it's going to be cheapest and type in the code Emmet Reviews to get the price even lower. Overall, you'll have a blog up and running for 4 years by spending just around $40. But you'll still need a website name or a domain name. To register that, just type in your desired name right here. You can type in whatever you want, I'll go with emmetreviews.tech and just check if it's available. If it is available, awesome, that means you can purchase it. So just click here and then continue to cart and finally the check out now button will take you to the payment page where you'll need to complete the purchase. In general, it doesn't really matter which domain extension you get, but I generally recommend you get a .com one because that's what most users are familiar with and that's what most users are gonna try first. Of course, you can do anything you want. For example, my website ends in .reviews. So a .com one isn't mandatory, but it's highly recommended. Congratulations, now you're a proud owner of a domain name and web hosting. Time to create your blog. Click the get started button and select the website name that you've bought earlier. Here you'll need to fill out some details to register your website name. After you're done filling everything out, click finish domain name registration. Now select a build a new website and choose the WordPress option. Create your login information that you'll later use to manage your website. After clicking continue choose I don't need a template because we'll be getting a better one later. Okay, this part is very important. There's the your chosen location section which allows you to choose the physical location of your server where all of the website files will be stored. Okay, so I know that your first instinct is to choose the server location that's closest to you. But stop, you need to think about your readers because they're the ones that are gonna be visiting your blog. And reducing the physical location between your users and the server files makes your website load faster for that specific user. If you're unsure where your users are gonna be coming from, a good rule of thumb is if you're writing in English, it's probably gonna be in the United States. If you're writing in Spanish, it's probably gonna be Spain and the same for other languages. Now, your website will be created automatically. After all of the installing and configuration is done, you'll be presented with three options. Choose the middle one, manage website, and then click on edit website once that's done loading. At the moment, your blog kinda looks like this. Blech, not very impressive. The good news is that that's just the standard default look that it comes with and we can modify it quite easily and free of charge of course. So let's do that right now. This is the WordPress admin dashboard. You'll be able to edit your website through here. Let's work on the design first. Hover over the appearance button and click themes. Press add new button and you'll get a bunch of already made different designs to pick from. For this tutorial, I'll choose the Popularis Writer theme. To install it, type in the name in the search bar, then click install button next to it and finally click on activate. It's the perfect theme to start a blog, because after the installation is over, your site will look something like this right away. But don't worry, we will add content to it and customize it to make it look awesome. So let's start by adding in our first blog post. In your WordPress dashboard, click on posts and you can delete the hello world one, it's just a default template. Now click the add new button and this is where all the magic happens. First let's add a title to our blog post, let's type in something like what is Weblium for example. Next add some text by copy pasting what you already wrote or just write something new here yourself at the moment just to like test it out. After we have our title and some text we can add some images. Press the little plus symbol after a text paragraph, now click the image block. After it appears, click upload, select the files you want from your computer and wait till they're done updating. Yeah, 
it's uh, simple as that. When editing your posts, you don't need to take advantage of absolutely everything that WordPress has to offer. You'll mostly use a few most important building blocks like image, gallery, list, heading, and so on. And I think the names are quite self-explanatory about what they do. But if you're new, there are some things that are not super obvious, like categories or the featured image. But they're actually really, really important when creating your blog posts. So let me show you how to set categories and the featured image real quick. To set the featured image, click on, well, featured image right here on the right side. Then set featured image. And just upload a photo from your computer and click set featured image again. What this does is it sets the preview or thumbnail image to your post to the one you want. It's really important to get the attention of your audience and it will look something like this once you're done and you're scrolling through the blog as a reader. You can also see that some of the posts have categories. Here's how to set the category for a post you've written. On the right side click categories and then add new category. Type in the category name you want and press add new category. Now uncheck the ones you don't want and check the ones you do want to be attributed to this post. And finally, before publishing your post, make sure to add a couple of words that describe the post itself. For me it's Weblium, Review and Hosting. Then click on the Publish button. This helps the internal search systems and navigation of your website and external search systems like Google, Yahoo or Bing better understand what your content is about. So if a reader is typing in Weblium Review or Weblium Hosting, you have a higher chance of ranking and appearing on those search results. Okay, so now I'll show you how to add an about page, a contact form, a menu and style everything so it's nice and clean looking. Let's start with the about page. While in your WordPress dashboard, click on pages and then add new, well to add a new page. This will take you to the page editor. I'll just type in about me as the title and fill it in with some content. Then I'll just add a picture of myself using the same exact techniques we used earlier. But if we would visit the page right now, you don't see the about me section because there is no menu yet. But don't worry, the page was created and will make it appear once we add a menu later down this video. But before we do that, let's add a contact form. Hostinger already installs a plugin called WP Forms, which is WordPress auto installation, which allows you to create a functioning form right out of the gate. So just click on WP Forms and click add new. Here you can search for the forms you've created earlier or use a preset. I'll use the simple contact form because I believe it's enough to get started. If you want to add additional fields to this contact form, just drag and drop them from the left side. But for the form that I'm creating, the default one works just fine. So I'll click on save and once you've created your form, go back to your WordPress dashboard and create a brand new page using the techniques I showed you earlier. I'll call mine contact us. Here just click on the little plus and find the WP forms widget. Select the form that you want to import and it will be added in automatically. Now all you need to do is click on publish. By the way, all of the contact form submissions that you get will go directly to the email address that you've used when installing WordPress. So now we have all of these pages created but users still can't see them because we don't have a menu. So let's fix that and create a navigational masterpiece. If you would go to your website right now, you would see this add a menu button. Click on it. Now give your menu a name. I'll go for main just not to lose track of it. I'll remove the sample page and add some categories because our pages are already added to this menu. By clicking and dragging around, you can change the order your items are being displayed in. Once you're happy with everything, click the create menu button and once created, change the location of this menu to the main menu. And here we have a functioning menu with all of the pages done in like a couple of minutes. By this point, the majority of the work is already done. But now I want to show you how to customize everything and make it a little bit more personal by adding a favicon and a logo, as well as removing some unnecessary elements from the sidebar to make your design cleaner and more professional. While on your page and logged into the WordPress dashboard, in the left corner you'll see a button called Customize. Click on it and let's do some magic. First install the Popularis Extra plugin by clicking here. Once that's done, click on the widgets and select the sidebar area. From here I'll remove the meta, archives and recent comment section because they're just cluttering your blog. Now by clicking on add a widget, I'll select the about me section. 
drag it up so it's displayed at the very top of your web page, and time to modify that about section a bit. Start by uploading a custom photo and adding a description. For the social link target, choose the blank. This will make all of the social media links open up in a new tab instead of the same page. Now just fill in all of your social media information and click done. I'll also add a tag cloud and move it right beneath the search bar to make the navigation for users just a tad bit easier. With the sidebar looking nice and clean, it's time for those final finishing touches like adding your own logo and a favicon to your website to make it like truly yours. Once again, click on the customize button in the top left, navigate to site identity and click select logo. Now just upload your logo and if you don't have a logo, I'll actually leave a video on how you can make one for free and fast at the top right. Now unselect the display site title and tagline option. If you don't wish to change anything else, like the color of your page, just click on publish and you'll be finished with the design. By this point, you should have a fully functioning and customized blog that you can truly call your own. Of course, there are some additional optimizations for speed that you can make or searchability, but that's a topic for another video and I hope I'll get to make it in the future. For now, good luck creating your websites and blogs. I'll see you in the next video if you subscribe, of course. So, subscribe to my channel.